The vehicle that we're working on today in the shop is a 2004 Chrysler PT Cruiser. I want to walk you through step by step how to remove the radiator assembly. Uh, nothing too elaborate. Just a few things you need to get to, a few items you need to take out of the way. Uh, so with that, I'll go ahead and get you started. And one thing is kind of a side note. Um, one thing I always recommend if you're going to be doing a radiator for whatever reason, uh, being as late game, clogged, whatever. Uh, usually by then it's got some miles on the engine. Usually it doesn't happen on 30,000 miles. Usually it's 100 plus. While you've got it apart, buy you some radiator hoses. Uh, if you've already got the upper and lower loose and taken off of the radiator, now you just got to get to the other end of the hoses. So it's more beneficial and it makes more common sense to go ahead and do it now. Uh, get you some fresh hoses with the new radiator. Uh, much as if you uh, you buy four tires, you want to have an alignment, otherwise you may wear your new tires out. So that's just a side note, keep that in mind, go ahead and pick up your hoses. You're not going to be spending that much more time doing it because you've already got it halfway off. Unless it gets routed some strange way, which it does from time to time. So just keep that in mind as you're doing this repair. Now we got the vehicle up in there so that we can get to everything a whole lot easier. Now, on the driver's side lower portion of the radiator is where you're going to find the actual drain. Uh, you've got two, a couple options. You can actually use the drain to drain the antifreeze out or go ahead and unclamp one of the radiator hoses, the lower one here, and pull it off. The reason why I'm giving you that option is, depending on the number of miles, uh, if this drain hasn't been opened up in a while, there's an O-ring inside. And when you go to twist it and pull it out, much like a screw, you'll come out so far until it stops. It has a tendency to actually split the O-ring. And you won't know until you put it back in or you tighten it back up, put your antifreeze in, then you see a steady drip coming out. So depending on how you want to do it, you got a lot of miles, you may want to opt for doing the radiator hose removal and then let it drain. If you're going to do the drain on the radiator, what I do recommend doing is getting some WD-40 and then finding the bottom of the drain where it comes out. Stick your little spray nozzle in there. And as you spray, it'll come out around the portion of the drain that you're gonna be turning. Now you just get your pair of pliers and you're gonna be turning counterclockwise and pulling out at the same time. And now that's backed out and freezing now draining out. gone ahead and we drained the radiator and got all the cooling out. Now we got to get access to the radiator. I've gone ahead and unfastened up the radiator hose and moved it out of the way. I've also gone ahead and opened up the air filter box and turned it and got it out of my way. Now what we got to do is get the grill off the front of the vehicle. So we're going to work on removing four seven millimeter bolt screws slash bolts. Uh, two on the passenger side, and there's going to be two on the driver's side. I've already got the ones on the driver's side taken off. Now in order to get the grill off, you need to push down slightly and pop it off. Push down, pop it off. So now we're going to move on to getting the upper radiator support out of the way. Once our upper radiator support's out of the way, we're going to have a little bit more room to work. The radiator bill to move in and out so we can get to that as well and work on getting that fan motor off. What we've got to do, we've got approximately three 10 millimeter bolts. Three on this side, one, two, and three. Uh, same thing on this side, one, two, and three. Then we've got a little support bracket we need to get off, which is held in place with a nut right now, holding the outside air temp sensor on. Once we get behind there, we've got a 13 millimeter on the back and then the two 13s for the latches. The reason why I take the latch assembly off is because that way I can get the vaporator support off and to the side and just lay it to the side. Otherwise, you leave it on, you're going to want it to dangle and it dangles, it could scratch at the front bumper. So let's go ahead and move on getting those bolts off the side as well as the latch and that support. Keep in mind about this latch. Once you take the bolts off, you're actually going to see where there's a place where you can actually see where the old bolt washer used to be. And you'll actually be a semicircle there. And that's what you're going to use when you go back with it to kind of line it up. 
uh, temporarily to see if everything lines up. You'll line up where those washers were on both sides and snug it all the way down. And then you're going to shut your hood and make sure everything's fine. If not, you're going to make some small adjustments. Now, the latch will have bolts sticking out with you. Both of these studs are 13 millimeters. When you start taking them loose, there's actually going to be a washer sandwiched between the latch and the braiders for it. So watch it when you pull that stud out, that, that washer don't fall and fall down in somewhere up in here and you got to fight to get it. And one minor correction is this stud right here for that support is actually going to be a 12 millimeter. Washer that's about to fall. Here's that wash I was telling you, it's on the back side. Ah, look at that. Now pay attention, drop the other one. So that's a good thing to show you. Make sure you get the washer from that side and that one as well. Stud. And then move on. Luckily, everything gets captured right down in the bottom down here. You can get to it fairly easy. Here we go. Now the upper radiator port's ready to come off out of the way. Now you've got that movement I was telling you with the radiator, so now we've got a little something to work with. Uh, we'll go ahead and, like I said, work on removing the radiator fan. Once the fan's out of the way, we just got to do one more hose. And then uh, also work on the trans lines, and then the radiator will be out of the car.